You have to look at Harley in perspective. We've been around for 115 years, and for the majority of that time, we're a domestic company shipping units to Canada, the United States, and Mexico. In the 1980s, we had a turnaround and started exporting motorcycles, and at that time, oh, we were about 4,000 units being shipped to, uh, to Europe. Well, now things have changed again, and Harley is becoming an international global company. And by that, that means having manufacturing facilities throughout the world where there's markets for them. And, and just like Toyota, Honda, Mercedes-Benz, and BMW, they've done the same thing, and so has General Motors. So this quagmire we're in, I think, should be in perspective. And you have to remember one thing, that the heart and soul of Harley-Davidson is a V-twin engine. Potato, potato, potato. Those engines <laughs> are made by skilled employees. In, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So I'm not, I don't represent Harley. I've been tired for 15 years. But my estimation is that they'll be shipping engines from Milwaukee throughout the world and having assembly knockdown units in various spots in order to satisfy those marketplaces. So, so when, Clyde, when the president says that 100% of Harley should be uh, assembled in the United States, when was the last time that actually happened? 100%. Oh, I think back in the 1990s, early 1990s, before we opened up Brazil, or, and, and Harley also, um, I've, I've heard, has the facility someplace in Thailand. But those units are built for those markets, and they stay there. They don't come to the U.S. Um, Clyde, Clyde, I, I'm Clyde uh, this is Morgan Brennan. Ahead, Morgan. I'm actually standing uh, in front of a, a facility here in Kansas City to report out this story as it's been playing out this week. We're really happy to have you here on the phone for an interview. When President Trump tweets about Harley Davidson in this manner and tweets really sort of at the customers, American customers of Harley Davidson, I realize that there is this diversification strategy underway for the company and international sales are becoming a bigger and bigger piece of the mix. But the U.S. is still the biggest market. You still have this core rider demographic, which in many ways overlaps with the Trump base. How much could that impact sales here in the U.S.? Well, that, we'll have to estimate that sometime in the future. I don't think really, from my belief, it's going to impact anything in the United States as far as sales are concerned. Clyde, uh, but, tell me culturally, yeah. culturally, to follow up on that, how much of that Harley mystique that's so important to the brand itself, though, is rooted here? If there seems to be some sort of conflict inside the U.S. or uh, a stirring up of the U.S. base against the Harley brand, does that affect how Harley is viewed internationally? Um, it could, but if you understand the brand statement of Harley and what Harley is, and it, it's very simple, if you, you know, Harley Davidson. Uh, creates and provides a motorcycle lifestyle for motor enthusiasts who want their products and services to be symbols of strength, freedom, individuality, Americana, and want to share and participate in the Harley-Davidson heritage, tradition, and mystique. That is a global brand, and, that's, and it's going to appeal to people all over the world, including the United States. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.